welcome to another edition of the Time Flies Podcast. I'm your host, Dariel, and the Dream Team is back. back we got my back, guy back, Mike in the back, building. Back. What's good, boy? How you been, man? Chilling. It's been a minute, bro. It has been. It's been a- <laughs> well, eight minutes since we've been in the uh, makeshift studio, but... In person, yeah, in yeah, yeah, person. yeah. But, um, but go check out that episode. Me and Mike, we dropped one. Uh, we were um, talking about Nas's Magic, Magic 3. That was via Zoom. But like I said, finally got Mike back in the building, in person. Yes, sir. It's the only way to do it. Before we get into today's episode, my guy Mike, just how you been? How's the family? How's everything? How's life? Blessed, man. Can't yeah? complain too much. So, maintaining. Maintaining? That's all. Pushing through? Gotta push through. Gotta push through. <laughs> if you complain, you attract the wrong energy to your life. You just gotta keep pushing. Oh, that's a bar. Jesus, that's a bar. You wanna get into it? <laughs> you wanna get right into it? Let's get right into it. All right, bet. Okay, so let me start off with a little disclaimer. So, shout out to my boy Jeff and Rainer. Rainer, specifically, he's a big Drake stan. I was trying to get them on the pod to talk about the boys' album. We're gonna go a lot of different places with this episode. But the first thing we're gonna start off with, we're gonna start off talking about. The boy. We're gonna be talking about for all the dogs. Now Rainer, like I said, he's a hip he's a Drake stan. And I was trying to get him on the pod, but scheduling just got in the way and shit. So Rainer, if you're watching this or hearing this, I'm sorry. But I've been trying to get my shit off and I'm gonna get my shit off right now. Okay, now I got that out of the way. Alright, so for all the dogs, if we're talking hip hop in twenty twenty three, of course we gotta talk about the king of hip hop. We yeah. gotta talk about Drake. I think that's yeah. undeniable. Undeniable. Oh, and obviously, we never saw a run like this. One hundred percent. Obviously, right. chime in whenever. So yeah, we got to we gotta talk about the boy. This is one of, if not the most anticipated albums of twenty twenty three. So going into this album, I was telling my boys, and we're on a group chat, and I'm like, "Yo, Rainer," I'm like, "Yo, the boy has pressure on him," and Rainer was like, "No, he's like Drake can't have any pressure on him. He's a king of hip hop. Whatever he's gonna do is gonna go diamond gold, whatever, right?" And I'm coming at Rainer from the perspective of, "All right, listen." His last three projects, starting from CLB, Shutterfly Lover Boy, Honestly Nevermind, and then it was um her loss with 21. Certified Lover Loverboy was going at the time was going up against Donda. Right. In my opinion, I think Donda got it by a landslide. If we're talking about quality of music, correct. One thousand percent. That's what I was talking about. I was talking about quality of music. And unfortunately, the whole Kanye, the whole Ye and Drake stuff, it was like really, at, it was really like butting heads in that moment. That was, yeah, that was one of the climaxes of that. Yeah. Exactly. So of course, the general audience, they're going to pit the two albums together since they came out around the same time. Whose album was better? I think, again, you said and I said, I think Donna got out by a landslide. The quality of music was a lot better. Drake, Certified Lover Boy was a good album, but it just, it wasn't what we were hoping for from Drake. It's what's become the expectation for a Drake album. 100%. But I'm gonna, cause I know you've been waiting to go ISO on this. <laughs> we'll develop, we'll further that yeah, yeah, conversation. Yeah. But we're yeah. gonna come back to that point exactly. We're gonna come back to that point exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then after CLB, what's the album after that? Honestly, never mind. Honestly, never mind is, if you're a Drake, if you're a hip hop head, you know Honestly, never mind is not a hip hop album. There's a reason why he, he you know. Which I'm not mad at. Why he did. Which I'm not mad at. I get it. Drake is trying to he's trying to cater to different markets. He's trying to cater to fucking Ibiza. All the white people in Ibiza yeah, going yeah. crazy in Mykonos and all that shit. Yeah. I like the album. I'm, I, I'm, my brother, shout out Diego. My brother, he loves house music. So like I kind of grew up with that music. Yeah. So I was kind of used to it. I wasn't mad at it. I liked a lot, a lot of songs of off the album. To that music. <laughs> Facts. I wasn't mad at the album. But of course, if we're talking hip hop, you can't bring up honestly, never mind within Drake's discography. You're not gonna bring up the album. No. Okay. He just had the joint with Twenty One Savage at the tail end of it, which was fire. What was the name of that again? Her loss. No, 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 no. The, oh, the, the song. The end, that, uh, it was, it was yeah, a, yeah. released as a Lucy originally, and then it, it came back. Jimmy Cooks. Good call, fire. Boy. Yes, and then, perfectly done. Nice little segue to the album after honestly, never mind. We got Her Loss, which is a joint album with Twenty One. And the last song off of Honestly Nevermind, like you just said, Jimmy Cooks, was a prelude to Her Loss. Mm -hmm. Now, Her Loss is a joint album. It's not an album that Drake has on his own. Even though people say Drake has a majority of the songs, he's on most of the songs, 21 is barely on the album Ad Living, right? In my opinion, it's still a Drake and 21 album. It's not a Drake album solo. That's a joint album. So, you take that into consideration, 
So then I was telling Rainer, I'm like, listen, his last three projects have not been it. They have not been it. They have not been what the Drake fans, what the hip hop fans are expecting from Drake, the king of hip hop. It's time. We need a solidified classic. In my opinion, I think Take Care is his only solidified classic. If nothing was the same, really close behind it. I think you could I think you can add it to his discography as far as classics. But as far as undeniable, undisputable, I only have Take Care. And for an artist of Drake's caliber, the king of hip hop for the past decade, for the past 15 years, shouldn't he have more than one body of work that's an undisputable classic? It's tough because you're contextualizing it with the hip hop that we came from, which isn't necessarily relevant to the standards of today. Where in our eyes, Something that hindered even the best rappers of our generation, the Jada Kiss and the Fabulous, was the fact that <laughs> was the fact that they don't really have a classic album. I mean, Kiss obviously with the locks, you could argue, but in our you know our I'm generation, gonna let you cook, but I already got a dispute against that. We, but I'm gonna let you yeah, cook, the right? rappers that we come from, they needed a classic something. Fab was very relevant in the mixtape circuit, but if you're talking like studio albums as they're projected as they're released you could say fab probably doesn't have a a classic under those no i agree with you fab and jada they don't have classic albums as far as commercial yeah. releases but this is where i dispute that fab and jada were never where drake is now mm -hmm. fab and jada I get it. you yeah. feel me so i feel like i feel like the comparison we can make and i'm not talking about the kind of music they make I'm not talking about what they say in their music. I'm just talking about from the standpoint of within the hip hop culture, as far as being the guy in hip hop culture, I feel like you can compare Drake with Jay. Yeah. How long was Jay's run? Jay's run was damn near over a decade, right? Yeah. Okay, and how many classes, is, in your opinion, I'm asking you, because in my opinion, this guy is the music encyclopedia, not just hip hop. But in your opinion, how yeah. many classics does Jay have? That could be the big... I think, okay, if we're talking objective classics, like to the masses, because I'm someone, and I think I vocalized this before, who, in my lifetime, volume one, I look at cla as a classic. The majority doesn't. Okay. Long story less long, I would say that the majority of people will say Jay's classics... Reasonable Doubt. Reasonable Doubt. Yeah. Probably Hard Knock Life. Okay. This, this is the masses you're talking the about. The masses. Okay. Hard Knock Life. You already got two. The Blueprint. You already got three. And The Black Album. You got four. That's I think four. That those are mm. universal classics in terms of the masses. So that's the masses. You're talking about the masses. You named four albums. And I think it's fair to say to the masses within the hip hop culture, Drake, I think maybe has two. Maybe has two. And, for, and I think Nothing Was the Same is a conversation. So that's what I'm saying. I'm saying like in some Drake, circles if you're reading this too. I've never heard that. Yeah, I've heard that. You've heard I, I actually, this is a classic. I actually think that that's one of his his um more uh revisitable, if that's a word, albums. I like that album too. I still yeah, I still go back like I'll still bump that in the gym. Some of that shit still goes. I yeah, it's just it it's a different hip hop and it's kind of to that generation and I know you're going to go into ISO, but to that generation, <laughs> you know that that Cole, Drake, Wale, Kendrick that we always talk about. Sean, don't forget Sean. Sean, they're right at the cusp of albums mattering and then the game transitioning into a singles and a streaming game. So there was less emphasis on the album. But the rappers who cared about making albums still made classics. You still get a classic out of Cole. You still get you still get a classic undisputed with the good kid Mad City from Kendrick. Yeah, I mean like you said, they were right so on the cusp of the right streaming. They were right on the cusp, so it's a different game. Copies, yeah. So you don't really need the classic album for the hip hop artist today to be the guy, unfortunately. I mean, I get, I get what you're saying, but th this is to I'm us. Just, yes, you do. Because we're from an older school. To I get us, it. Yeah. Yes, but to the people that he's appealing to with this. But listen, album, but listen to the listen to the names that you just mentioned. You mentioned Cole. You mentioned yep. Dot. You mentioned Sean. I, I'm pretty sure you mentioned Wale, right? Of course. You know Drake is in that class. Yeah. Drake is in that class. So he falls within the same parameters of. Of coming out with a classic or not. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. If, if like, I get it, Drake... He should have... If you're asking me if I think he should have 
more than what he has as far as his catalog? Absolutely. Okay, cool. So we're in agreement from there. And this this is just my whole point with Drake. I just feel like Drake, being the artist and being where he is right now in the mountain of hip hop, he should just have way more certifiable classics than he does right now. And he's been shitting the bed. For me, he's been shitting the bed. And if okay. you're the king of hip hop right now, like I get it. If you've been on the king for you've been on the hill for a while, you might get lazy, you might get comfortable, shit might might might, might go through your fingers, right? I get it. But it's been crazy because Drake has been on this hill for damn near 15 years that I think he just lost sight of what made him the king of hip hop. And I'm, I'm not saying that he can never get it back, but this is this is, this was just my gripe with Drake going into this album. I'm, I was going into this album being like, all right, like let's see, this is like I, for me, you had 0 for three great albums. I listen to them. I'm not saying they're bad albums, but again, if we're comparing just like Drake's status in hip hop to others before him. We got to hold Drake to the same standard that we did to others. But you also understand that Drake is no longer even making albums. Since since More Life, he's been making playlists. It's packaged like an album, but he's been making playlists. And why do you think he's doing that? Because he has to appeal to everyone. And he's got to get his streaming numbers. If he can get streams from this community, putting some real rap shit on there, like the, the conductor produce. Conductor, uh, we have a problem. <laughs> 8 a.m. in Charlotte. 8 a.m. in Charlotte, which is fire. Fire. And okay, then he could right. have the scissor record. He could have, he, you know, if he could touch all these markets, get the streaming in all places, that's the main objective. The classic album. And there's that infamous quote that, that haunts, not haunts Drake, but he knows exactly what he's doing. On Scorpion, what did he say on uh, Roses? Never, oh, my bad. What was it? Ro Sandra's Rose. He uh, said, and I know a classic is just 10 of these. So uh, he, knows, he knows exactly what he has to do to appeal to us. He's not, he doesn't care. Facts. No, and all the power to him. And yes, you brought me to something that I remember now. He said, quote, he said he's never going to drop an entire rap album because right. of what you just said. He has too many different markets to cater to. But that's what's holding, I feel like that's what's holding that him back. That is his gift and his curse. Facts. If he focuses on one album, why can't he just drop Drop, drop two albums back to back. Drop a hip hop album, 10 tracks, 10 to 13 tracks, straight hip hop, boom bap. It doesn't even have to be all boom bap. It could be, it could be um, uh, Boy Wonder, it could be 40, it could be any of these hip hop producers, right? And then drop another album back to back where it's purely R&B. He doesn't have to drop the, the in one project half R&B, half rap. Why doesn't he drop one entire rap album, one entire R&B album? He could do that or he could do the speaker box love below thing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm I saying. Yeah, like, in one cool, yeah. project, yeah, he had like two sides to it, and I'm saying like, fuck that. Drop an entire hip hop album, and then drop an entire R and B album, maybe within a month of each other, and then that rap album, if it's as good as we think it could be, he's gonna have this certified, undeniable and classic, and he'll be he'll be in the conversation now. Yeah, you feel me? And he yeah, and he would he would be able to deliver. He he chooses not to. That line told him. Yeah. He, cho he chooses not to. You're so right, man. That's his gift and his curse. Before we get into the album, because of course we're going we're gonna to break it down track by track. I've been listening for to sure. this album heavily as of late in preparation for the pod. But do you have anything that you want to say towards my remarks or anything independently? Whatever you want to no, go. We're, we're pretty. we're in agreement there. I mean, I think, you know, from out, you know, based on our standards, we all hope that Drake would have that across the board classic where, I mean... Take Care, to your point, is probably the most universally accepted classic because that's that's what carves out Drake as an artist. That gives that the sound, that gives the context. Album, that's that's really where yeah, yeah. he came to be with the assistance of The weekend. that dark, melodic, but Holy like... Shit, up, yeah. Yep. So, yeah. tell me, just tell me your thoughts, initial thoughts on uh, listening to the album. Did you like it? Were you disappointed? I don't think you were disappointed, but just tell me your feelings, your thoughts about the album when you heard it. For all the dogs. Yeah, for all the dogs. You know, <laughs> it like I like I was saying earlier, this is what a Drake album has become. I don't I haven't said to myself, damn Drake's coming. Pause. Midnight <laughs> since nothing was the same. Because I know what to expect. We're gonna get joints we really like out of this. Is it ever gonna be a consistent through through and through listen? I don't think we're ever gonna get that from Drake. And so here you have your moments, like I, I reference because it's my type of shit, the Charlotte joint produced by Conductor, along with some other, yeah. Conductor! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, along with some other shit on here, like there was some, um, 
some good, you know, R&B shit on here. But I can't say I was disappointed because the bar is not that. Like, yeah, yeah. like I said, I know I'm gonna get a couple of joints from Drake that I'll listen to forever because he is that level of artist. Mm -hmm. He chooses to, you know, produce these albums the way he does, and so you get what you get. It's I can't say I was disappointed. I can't say I've listened to the entire album more than twice either. Mm. That's it. That's that's really where I'm at with Drake's albums. Like as far I, as Drake, as far as just listening to Drake. Period. Yeah, because yeah. I'm always gonna listen. I, I love Drake's music. You know, Drake's one of those artists who defines an era in your life. For for us, this is our twenties. This is our late teens. Our our whole twenties. Facts. Him, he's still like going that at same it. class, and he's still he's still at the top of it. So. I'm always going to listen. I'm always going to get something that I like out of it. But as a body of work, mm. I like the cover. Adonis drawing the cover. Shout out Adonis. Uh, me, personally, listening to the album, I'm right, I'm right on par with you, man. Like, I liked it. First time listening to it. I liked it. I wasn't disappointed. It's not that I wasn't disappointed. I just, like, how do I put it? Like, I guess I was just... You want something else out of him? Were you expecting something else? I was not. I wasn't expecting anything else from him. But I guess I wanted something more from him. Like, this album was kind of what I was expecting. And going into it, I wanted Drake to put out that classic album, but it's just another example of, like, he doesn't care. He's going to do what he wants to do, and this is what we get, which is not which is not bad music. It's quality music. It's great music. There's songs off here that I fucking love. And Cold you coming? smoked. We're going we're gonna to get into that. We're going to get into that. Fuck. That's one of my gripes. That's one of my gripes, but we're going to get into that. Just, like, another little kind of annoying thing that I'm kind of, like, over with Drake is, like, He's still talking about the same stuff about how girls have like done him over. So he calls this album for the dogs and everybody thinks he's going to be rapping and going at everybody's necks on this album, right? Now, you know, like that was kind of on us, the fans, the general hip hop fans and Drake stands putting that expectation on him. But when you listen to the album, he's talking about the same shit. He's talking but he's about talking about the women of the dogs. It's for the women who are dogging him out. But he's talking about the same shit. He's talking about women that are breaking his heart, women that he tried to put onto like amazing things, you know, um, material things, yeah. taking them to trips, and they break his heart again. Like we've heard this song but over and over from Drake, bro. That tells me that he's bored with music and maybe at a standstill creatively, because I feel like he talks about those things to latch on to the relatability that he had. Because that was Drake's whole thing when he first came out. Dog, but it's he 15 connected. years later. But the thing is, he... So, he's reaching... What are we doing? He's reaching for that connection point. I remember he said something on the Lemon Pepper Freestyle about, you know, not even being able to be relatable anymore. I think that that's a real thing in his head. So, he goes back... To what he knows. To what he knows. He, he draws from that, that original source, but it doesn't sound the same. Because when he used to do it... This shit was fresh. The shit just, you know, it was a different perspective. Now it's like, I don't know that we're getting, you know, genuine real life experiences or if he's just giving us this because he knows that the large majority of people are just going to be like, yeah, I, I connect. But people <laughs> really listen, no, okay. You, you just, you expect something else creatively from Drake because you know he is that level of artist. Like he's and experienced. I'm trying to avoid going on the same... You know, Joe Budden rant because Joe had a yeah. perspective that was similar that I had too. But no, but Joe, yeah, we're talking about Joe Budden when he was saying that like, yo, what are you doing? Like, you're talking about the same stuff. Like, he's he's kind of like hanging around younger artists. It's like you're not that young artist anymore. That's what Joe Budden was saying. But he has a point. But going back to the whole women breaking his heart, like it's just recycled, bro. And you've had experiences in your life. You have a son, and yeah, he's incorporated his son a little bit yeah. more into music. But I feel like we, I feel like. We should get a little bit more of that. And, like, dog, you go from fucking the embassy that his fucking, his, the, the house that he built is a fucking museum. Like, the, the experiences and the different perspectives that he can come from. But we're still talking about women breaking your heart. Like, what are we doing, bro? So, I'm not, I'm not a Drake stan. So, again, if you're listening to this, leave it in the comments. Tell us, let us know a song or, I don't know, maybe a project that me and Mike maybe missed. I don't know how that's possible. But let us know about a song or something that they'll he might be talking so about something different. <laughs> right? That's what they'll go back to. But. Right? All right, man. So now that we talked about a lot about going into the album, why don't we actually dive into the album? You feel me? <laughs> First track, Virginia Beach. I think what I'm going to say is what everybody was thinking. Everybody thought he was going to open a track going up Push's Neck. Yeah. And I, <laughs> but I think even that's calculated. I think he names it that. 
he knows what people are thinking and he just comes in the way he comes in like so it's never it's never as obvious as as it appears with someone like Drake just mm-hmm. like Kanye it's never yeah so yeah it was cool though I liked it I like it was Virginia it. Beach next song Amen featuring Tizo Touchdown Fire. You like it? Okay. I think it's one of the standouts. Ooh, I think interesting. It's one of the standouts. I think Tizo smoked that. I think that that was one of the stronger efforts on the on the project. Interesting. This is actually a skip for me. Yeah. It's a skip for me. For Tizo sure. comes back in a, in a couple songs, in a few songs actually. He yeah. comes back and he smokes it. Yeah. But as far as right now, me, I skip it. And you think it's one of the stronger outings yeah, I think for it's Drake? One of the stronger. Interesting. Calling for you. We pick up from the Her Loss collaboration. Twenty One Savage is on it. And one thing that I think this is like the first time that we hear it in this album where Drake does the B switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, he's kind of, I don't want to say he's copying Travis, but he's going the Travis route. And he does that for a few songs on this album where like the first B is one B and the second half is another B. 21 is, is rapping on a completely different beat from the, on this yeah. song. Yeah, this is Jimmy Cooks too. Didn't they do the same thing? I believe so, Cooks? yeah. It's so, the same formula. That, can we be real? Jimmy Cook. What? Calling for you is from the cutting room floor of her loss. I like it, though. It's cool. Yeah. But that's what it is. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it's it's a leftover from her loss. It was mm-hmm. on the cutting room floor. How about 21, though? 21's been on a run. 21's a piece. 21's been on a run. 21 has great chemistry with all the great artists of this generation. Him and Cole link up, fire. Him and Grammy, Drake, yeah. they always got some shit together. So, 21 is a... Underrated? Yeah. Why, why, why is that? Why do you think? Because the whole image and the time he came out, he came with the class of SoundCloud rappers... The name 21 Savage, very in line with the brand and the time that he came. But he's a lot bigger than what he's presented as. And he can rap. He makes great music. Um, right. He's got a sense of humor. He's got personality in his music. But time will be on his side. When people look back at his catalog, that's a catalog to look back on. Mm. The Metro Boomin and everything. Metro he, Boomin, once a month. Yeah. yeah. All right, so after calling for you, this is the... To me, personally, this is the beginning of a little bit of a run for Drake on this album. Yeah. Fear of Heights into Daylight into yeah. first, first Person Shooter featuring yeah. J. Cole. J. Okay, Cole. I don't know. Before we get into that song, I don't know if you have anything to say about Fear of Heights and Daylight. Daylight was one of the stronger outings Outings as well. It, that is that is a sequence right there on this album. Though. And that Daylight... The end of daylight, if not if I'm not mistaken, is when Adonis is freestyling a little bit. It's like, you yeah, don't yeah. want nothing with my man, right? Yeah. I was like, okay, cool, but yo, step aside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, please step aside. Yeah, uh, okay, so now let's get into the fucking smoke show. The smoke show. Yeah. No, dude, nobody wants it with Cole right now, bro. No. Him and featured, why even why even allow him to be on the record? Okay, so this is where this is where I gotta as much hate as I give Drake, let me give him a little bit of flowers right now. I want to give the respect to Drake for even allowing this to happen. Because if we're keeping it real, have we seen K-Dot have J. Cole on a song on one of his albums? No. Have we seen Big Sean have J. Cole on one of his recent albums? No, or K-Dot? Or, or uh, maybe Wale, I'm not sure. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. artists that are, are that tier, in our opinion. Wale and Cole go back and forth. They do, yeah. But the Not big one. three, Drake, Cole, and Kendrick. K Dot doesn't have Drake on any of his songs or Cole on any of his songs. Yeah. J. Cole hasn't really hasn't had any Drake songs on his albums. The only one that I can think of is um In the Morning. Was that off of the his debut? That was off a mixtape. That was off a mixtape, yeah. but then he put it in Sideline Story or no? Am I bugging? It's been a while, bro. He may yeah, have yeah, maybe. Right. But anyway, Drake, he puts J. Cole on his on his on his album. And, and he knows, he knows that when we see that feature on this album. Everyone's gonna gravitate towards that song. Because like we just said, it's one of the big it's two out of the big three. We wanna see who's gonna go at who. We wanna see who's better at who who's better at rapping. And yeah, like I said, it's a fucking smoke show. This song speaks to the whole thing about Drake. Drake doesn't give a fuck about us. <laughs> he doesn't because he the thing is, Drake is a very capable rapper. We've heard it time and time again. He he is. <laughs> he does he's yes, he's yes. doing this, he's making he's making the song the song. He's laying the floor out for Cole. He there's nothing Drake could have done with that Cole verse. Wait, Cole so you're saying man possessed. So you're saying you're saying Drake laid out the carpet for him? It's like, yeah. yo, do you bro. Got it. So he's running from the smoke. Running from the smoke. 
Ooh. There's nothing you can do, but no, 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 no you can't. No, 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 no. There is no. Oh, I thought you were gonna say there's nothing wrong about that. No, there's nothing you can do about it. No, you can't. You can actually show up. That's what you can do about First it. First call. Uh, you can try and show up. up. You can. And if he tried to show up, he would probably that was... do good. Yeah. But the thing is, guarantee you, if this was on a forty style record, submarine sample, a little slower tempo. Lemon Pepper esque. Drake's gonna try to rap on a beat like that. You know you have no chance against Cole. Cole's gonna fucking bounce all over that like Spalding. Pause. <laughs> I mean, I get what you're saying, bro, but like, I don't want to use that as an excuse, bro. Like, it's not an excuse. You well, hear, you hear Cole going crazy saying that I'm three two, I'm the numero yeah, uno, yeah. and then fucking you got Drake over here talking about taking girls to dinner and being like, who to go? Like, yo, what the he said fuck, I feel bro? Like Muhammad Ali. Oh, Cole, yeah. He's like, when things aren't connected. <laughs> Cole, like, I got a job at IT. But that was yeah. a shot at... He was, I love Cole, bro. And I love him more in this era of his career Speaking than on. I even did before. Because he has developed so fucking beautifully. In com contrast to Drake. Not to say he necessarily hasn't, but with Cole, like, his projects are getting better. His rapping is getting better. No, Cole as an artist Cole has gotten better than Drake. Is, There's no Cole question. Cole is like... You see the growth. Man. You see the growth within like what he's talking about. You also see the growth of his rapping ability, I, being able to right. rap in different schemes and different flows. Exactly. What, and what, he cares about that? that piece of it, and that's what. But see, and I try not to apply my old school rules to this shit, but I can't help it. I love when a guy like Cole gets on a track and he's like, "Not, I'm, he I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to kill you." The same way I love that. No matter how famous Meek Mill got. He goes up to a radio station, what's he doing? He's gonna freestyle. You just He's gonna funk, right? I, I like rappers who keep in line with my core values of this shit. When you when it comes to rap, like you can get as famous, have as many hits as you want. But when it comes down to the essence of this shit, whether you're on a track with another guy who's a certified rapper or you're up at the radio station, I'm I'm coming for all of you. Facts. I love that spirit. I love that. Like, and I can't. I, and that's that's honestly, to your point, that deducts from Kendrick's legacy too, because I don't think Kendrick is aligned with with that. Or maybe he doesn't give a shit neither. But dudes like Cole, dudes like Meek, um, even Sean too. Sean's another guy. If he goes up to a radio station, he's gonna rap. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna rap. He, and let's not forget the whole control and everything that set fire to all this was because Sean had a track. Him, Kendrick, and Jay Electronica. Yeah. Sean, we need you, bro. And we know you're doing your, your fatherhood stuff, and we'd love to see that. And, but we need you, dog. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, Sean, e even though, like, we can make the argument of who gets on, on tracks with who as far as the biggest artist, but, I mean, Sean also had the, what was it, Detroit Cypress on this last album, on Detroit, Detroit 2. Detroit 2, yeah. Like so, he does song, shit yeah. that shows, yeah, I can have hits. Oh, yeah, Mark, uh, Marvin and Chardonnay, yeah, that's on, but I could rap. And that's yeah. something that it made me respect Sean after a while because at first I was like, this dude's delivery is weird, his voice is fucking weird, he's got a weird thing about it, he raps his fucking ass off. So we love that class, Cole, Kendrick, Drake, Sean, Wale, all that. But going back to this song, man, again, it's a fucking smoke show, and I just like... <laughs> it's a fucking smoke it's show? Like, Yo, fuck all that. <laughs> back to me. Fuck all that. <laughs> Back to fucking Drake getting smoked out of his boots from fucking Cole. <laughs> nah, man, it's just like... No, that's true. He did, and uh, I and get he it. he ran. Huh? He ran. He ran from the fight. He ran He ran from the fight. But I also want to throw this at you. What if... Whatever Drake rapped on that song, right? He was, rap he was rapping. What if that was Drake's... He actually was trying. If he was actually trying... It, and it was on a different beat, too. So I, I, don't, I just want to throw that out there because people are going to use that as an excuse. Whatever. But what if what if we find out that Drake was actually in the fucking studio? Like, oh shit, I just heard Cole's verse. Verse. Let me let me try let me try and pick my shit up, bro. If he like, nah, I don't think that. I don't think so either. But if that if that's that would be crazy. I'm we that. just we Drake, just need the disparity. Drake, between. I know you're listening. <laughs> if that's the case, don't even tell us that's the case. <laughs> I'm just saying, if we find out through some sort of blog, I don't fucking know. But no, you can tell by the way crazy. he by the way Drake approached the track. He put his verse on the track first. And Cole came in it. There's no way you're talking about the shit you're talking about on that first verse, knowing that Cole just opened the asshole of that track. 
<laughs> I don't care who you are. Yeah, no, call me crazy. Okay, after that, we got I Don't Give a Fuck featuring... I never want to hear this song again. Really? Damn. Sometimes I find, like, we're so different. I love this song. I never want to hear this song again. I love... I don't... I don't. I, don't, I have I have never listened to Yeet. I still don't really listen to Yeet. But from what I've heard is the sound of this song is Yeet's sound. And it's very... It reminds me of the Travis Scott, but it's like a little bit more electronic guitar-ish kind of yeah. wave and damn that is a, a decorative way of saying trash <laughs> i don't think that we talking about the song you talking about that kind of music that song i mean probably that kind of music too i don't know too much about i don't it. mind it yo I, I like i like i like the incorporation of different like elements of different genres of music into hip-hop but it's been done before and it's been done better all right no matter your opinion but yeah i like that song that's a no for you this is uh seven nine six nine Santa. This is where Tizo comes in. He's like, "Those will be those that we made from." Kills it. Yeah, Fucking he's, kills yeah, it. He smoked that. Tizo, salute. Definitely killed it. Okay, this is okay. Now this is another gripe that I have. After that, we got slime you out. All right, so no, this is another. This is another thing. So slime you out featuring Scissor. Yeah. First up, before I get before I give my take, tell me your take. What'd you think about the song? What'd you think about? Because this was the first single, yeah, if you will. That's the whole issue, though. That the song, if it was just kind of in pocket in the album, it still would probably be somewhat disappointing to me. But mm. when you put it out there as a first single, mm. you're just setting yourself up. This is not a first single track. In this, and I mean, maybe that was purposefully done too, but in this day and age, five minutes and ten seconds for the single. I mean, you see Drake and SZA, you know the history there. It's like this, you don't know really what you're going to get. So you were disappointed? Yeah. I think SZA actually smoked her verse, though. SZA did smoke her verse, but I'm in agreement with you. I just feel like the song should have been better. And even within the sequencing of the album, it's still not what I wanted. No, but it would have been, tell me not, it would have been better had you just heard it like that. Kind of for just the first time, the album. it would have been, yeah, right. It would have been. So I, I, and I think that might be the general consensus with that song, in general. But like you said, Scissor this smoker part. But I still, I don't know. It was just something about that song that didn't connect with me. Yeah. Like you said, Drake Scissor, you're expecting something. And it's not that it's a bad song, but it could have been more. So after that, then we got Bahamas Promises. For me personally, it's not that I don't like the song, and it's not a skip. But I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm just kind of like, okay. There's a whole lot of that at this point. There's a whole lot of, okay. All right. Uh, Tried Our Best is kind of the same thing yep. as far as Bahamas Promises. It's not a bad song. It's not a yeah. skit, but it's kind of like, okay. okay. And then we got a nice little um, shout out to DJ Screw, Screw the World. Yep. Now, yep. actually, one of my favorites. Drew Picasso. Yeah, Talk. Drew Picasso is fire. Talk. I fuck with it. I fuck with oh, it. Drew Picasso. I just like, I like the tempo of the song. Yeah. I like what he's talking about. No, he's talking okay. on this. That mm -hmm. that is something you can tell where he's drawing from a genuine place. Mm. Because it's just you. You feel that shit when you listen to music. When you when you listen the way we listen, you can tell what's contrived and what he's just. Lord knows where he was just kind of writing that record. One of my favorites. Members only. Excuse me. Featuring uh, Party. Yeah. Party's my guy. Where's your fucking album, guy? Parties? Facts. He, he dropped a he dropped a song, I think maybe in the summertime. It was a random ass uh wow. I was gonna say the name of the song is Turbulent, but it's not it. Whatever. No, no, no but he's dropped. I mean I think he's given a lot of his The last two um items of music that I know that Party has, he dropped his solo song, I think in the summer, and then he dropped a song with uh Diddy. It was like six yeah, was Porsches. A, he was on like that, he was on the Love album. Which I haven't heard yet, bro. But again, going back to Members Only, featuring Party Next Door, it's not one of their better collaborations, yeah. in my opinion. I like the song. I listen to it. But yeah, Drake and Party, they definitely have better songs. Yeah. What would Pluto do? For me, it's a skip. I don't fucking like this song. For you? It's a skip. I don't want to hear it again. And you know what's funny? I kinda, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of seeing this on the internet, that it's like, it's one of the standouts that people actually really like. My year is a lot different, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I think the way it starts, to, too. It starts with a ding, ding, ding. With like, it, it sounds like a piano, but I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't speak to me. 
And then after that, we got one of my one of my uh, favorites. All the parties are Chief Keep. I like I like the way I like whenever you see whenever you see Chief Keep kind of pop up. He the way he's utilized is usually good. I like and this was this was one of definitely the stronger efforts on the album. Chief Keith, I feel like he, um, I don't know if this is fair to say, but I feel like he's been getting a lot more of respect as of late for being like one of the pioneers in like the early 2010s of introducing. Exactly. Right? And I because feel you're like, seeing the mm. effects of his, these are all Chief Keith's children. Mm. These are all Waka Flocka, Chief Keith, Waka Chief the This is, that's the starting point for all of this. Shout out Chief Keith. For better or worse. Um, so yeah, I like that song. You said you like that song as well. Yeah. Um, all right, and now we get into, is it your favorite? That is. Yeah? Yeah. Produced by? You do it. I can't do Come it. on, man. Conductor, we have a problem. <laughs> Conductor, Conductor, we have, we a, have problem. a problem. Yeah, 8 a.m. in Charlotte. All right, talk to me, bro. What you liked about it going when you, when you, because yeah. you know that timestamp Drake is a thing. Timestamp Drake is a thing. Talk to me. Um, as soon as I fucking heard the Conductor drop, I had to like rewind back with Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess that that works too. You hear the soul sample. Drake in this tempo, he can't be fucked with. He's rapping his ass. So there was a couple of lines there when I was I was like, uh, gripe number five, elementary bars. That's some one of my gripes are, against the song. Well, so he, the thing was, I felt like this was a beat where he could just kind of talk his shit, but he was trying to like experiment with his rapping style. Mm. Don't do it on there, bro. Just talk from the heart on this one. <laughs> like, uh, what's the fucking bar he had? Something. About I got a couple. Him. He's using the European countries. So many checks owed. I feel Czechoslovakia, yeah. nigga. Right, no, come on, bro. Come you on. go wherever I go. I feel you go. Sl come on, come man. On, nah, on, come on, Drake. Come on. We don't come on. We can't do that on a timestamp song, bro. Nah, we can't. And that's what, like, I think production-wise, this had potential to be top three timestamp. Mm. But I think the level of bars, and then when you when you size that up to come on, five a.m. in Toronto, four p.m. in Calabasas, fuck, even nine a.m. in Dallas. Mm -hmm. What's that bar about? Teenage food, whatever. Drake, <laughs> the, he like timestamp. Drake is really a thing, and yeah. I'm not saying he didn't disappoint on this. In my opinion, I think the record itself is fire. But bar for bar, it's not his one of his better outings in terms of time stamp trick. Mm. And so, yeah, so this brings me to a point where I kind of just mentioned where there are some, it's not, it's not just in this song, it's in a few songs where you can point out some bars that are just like, it's, they just kind of sounded a little lazy. Um, in Virginia Beach, it's not a bar, but he says something about like, Something about like, mama, you so hot, I want to put a baby in you. And he used some sort of like words to rhyme together. And I was just like, like, dude, I could have put that line together. And I'm not trying to come off as a Drake hater, but these are like the little things that I'm looking for within the album, within the songs that I'm like, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just like holding you up to a standard that I feel like you should be held to because you're one of the kings of hip hop, whatever. Um, and you're proving you could rap. That too. You're proving you could rap, so we need something from you. So, okay. So, Aiden and Charlotte, I agree with you. I like the song. Anytime you hear boom bap, I'm I'm automatically in. And that conductor drop, I really fuck mm -hmm. with the fact that Drake did that. Let See, that's a little that's a little nugget to say. I still have my ear to the street mm. in that regard. You got a conductor track. How else are you gonna come across that? There's obviously the Benny track that you know you only heard a leaked version of it on YouTube with Drake yeah. and Benny. So th there's. Are we ever getting that song? <laughs> that, that was like three years ago. <laughs> if he comes out with like a care. Package Volume <laughs> Two, maybe we'll get it, or if it pops up on a Benny project, maybe. But mm. I don't. I think the moment's passed. Yeah. Okay. So after eight AM in Charlotte, we got BBL Love Interlude, and I obviously this is one of the highlights of the album where you get fucking shot. Shade do on B A R K yeah. Radio. That, I was hyped when I heard Shade. I was like, oh shit, okay. No, that's hard. That shit was fire. Yeah, and hard. there's always been rumors that I think. Uh, like Drake's number one artist that he's that he's always wanted to work with that he hasn't gotten to so far is Sade, and there was always rumors that they were trying to work together. A Sade and Drake song. I'm in. I'm in. Take my fucking money, bro. 
If we if we put together Shade's vocal right. ability, that's what I'm saying. I don't have the confidence that it would be done right at this point, though. I, just I mean, what does that even, if it's done right? What does that look like to you? What does that sound it's like to you? Hard to say. You know, I just know what I hear. I hear you, but um, but yeah, when I heard that that Drake has been a Shade fan and he wants to and he wants wants to work with Shade, I was like, God damn, I want to hear that. Shade, I grew, my mom is a huge Shade fan and I grew up Shade. listening to Shade, so the fucking legend. Um, and then after that, I think we got one of, if not the worst song on the album. And I don't know how you fucked this up. Bad Bunny is running the, r- running the world right now. And his album is fire. His album is fire. So, like, dude, this is like, I don't even let it play for a second. It's, it's, a, a it's an automatic skip, bro. To Patrick Ewing. So, Mr. Finger Roll. I know, right? I don't know what happened. J- yeah. Drake was, was wearing mad knee pads like fucking Patrick Ewing. Was in the <laughs> uh, okay. Right number 15. Uh, next song. From here on, I don't need to hear anything else. <laughs> Facts. Rich Baby Daddy featuring Sexy Red and the second feature from SZA. Why is Sexy Red getting a, on a fucking Drake album? And this goes... No. This goes to what... This is goes to what um, Budden was saying, how, like, Drake is kind of, like, trying to stay young where you don't need to stay young. You could just... You could just be on your own. You don't have to attach yourself to, like, whoever's hot right now. Sexy Red just popped off this past summer? A little bit before that, but she has that grab, that appeal that Cardi B originally had, that, like, genuine hood rat shit that... And I get... See, okay, I I hate doing this to you because I fucking, like, drag the pot out. No, it's all good. Something that I feel like Drake got from Ye, but can't do as well as Ye, is he takes pieces... Of the culture, things that are very much in the now, and he tries to incorporate into his albums. Like Ye always said, you listen to his album, you listen to Graduation, you see Wayne, you see T Pain, because those were the guys of the time. He finds a way to fit those guys within the scope of his album, within the scope of his music. I feel like Drake does the same thing. That's why, from a, a culturally relevant standpoint, it makes sense to have Sexy Red on the album. True. But. It's not done right, because that's one thing that Drake will never have a leg up on Ye, and it's the overall composer and the producer. That's Drake, that is Ye's standpoint, where he can figure out placement for these people. You heard it on Donda, too. He fucking had everyone on there, yeah, and it was placed the beautifully. <laughs> it was placed beautifully. He can still do that, and I think that Drake does attempt to do that. It's just not there. It's not, you know, he doesn't have maybe the right minds or the right ideas in the room, and it just comes out like this. Okay, so now this brings me to the next song, another late night featuring Lil Yachty. Why the fuck was Lil Yachty the ba- basically the rollout for this fucking album? Why the fuck was Yachty doing an interview saying, like, this is one of Drake's best albums? Drake's ver- One of Drake's best verses are on this album. What the fuck, bro? First of all, we don't need you talking about Drake. Yachty, circle back. Where was the verse that you were talking about? And this is, the, and, but, but also I like Yachty, especially with what what I he's like him been as doing. A personality. You don't like his music? No. You don't like what he's been putting out lately? Like if we're talking about the secret recipe joint with Cole. Did you Did you listen to that album he dropped in the beginning of the year? Let's yeah, start no, here. that yeah, no, that was no, that mm-hmm. was good album. That's what I'm saying, and th- yeah. this this kind of goes into what you were saying about Cole a little earlier about how we see the growth within Cole about the rapping yeah. schemes. The flows. I see that with Yachty. Yachty's starting to do that. He's starting to do it. He's trying to put his foot into, like, different genres, trying to incorporate it within hip-hop, and I fucking appreciate that so much. But, like, as far as Yachty being the rollout for this album, it's like, bro, we don't need all that. And and then on top of that, like you, like I just said, you're saying that Drake's one of, one of Drake's better verses is on this album. Like, you're already, like, putting him behind... Yeah, you set him back. You put him behind the eight ball. And you're saying, I almost crashed listening to For All The Dog. Yeah. Probably Yachty. What did you think about the song? Not for me. No? I mean, I don't mind it. It's cool. That's what I mean. Like, I think the Bad Bunny record, the Rich Baby Daddy record, n- no. These three, <laughs> these three, not bad, cool. That's my consensus for the next three. Yeah, That's I'm with pretty you. much it. Yeah, the, and the last two, Away From Home and Polar Opposites, it's just, yeah, I'm just, okay, cool. Um, yeah, we could be background music somewhere. So, we talked about, <laughs> a lot about Drake, 
Um, just overall, just give me give me your favorites. Give me your favorites from this album. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Amen. I'm gonna go. First person shooter because that cold verse, and I'm gonna go. Um, Charlotte. Those three. Those three. All right. So we're doing top three. Top three for me. We got Virginia Beach, Drew Picasso. Say it. You wanna go with that? I was yo, you you know me. <laughs> I don't give a fuck with you. <laughs> yeah, man. The and the Cole is just like it, to me that's Cole's song, so that's why I'm not picking yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, those are the top three for me, man. Drake, <laughs> salute, yeah, being one yeah. of the kings of hip hop for the past fifteen years. And again, for sure. if we're talking the year in hip hop, we gotta talk about the boy. He's running shit right now. We wanna see you grow and we do we're talking about you like this because we're fans of music and we're fans of hip hop. And we've never seen a run like this before. Big facts. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Before we sign off, we want to remind you to hit the links in the description for social media, for the Shia LaBeouf shirts, for Reddit, everything you want to find. The link will be in the description. Mike, my guy, I want yes. to thank you so much bro, for coming through. Always. First time in a while being in yes, person. Sir. Are you going to plug your OnlyFans? My OnlyFans? No, I don't have an OnlyFans. <laughs> Maybe that might be in the... That's going to be on the docket. But uh, Mike, again, I want to say thank you for giving me your time and energy. And um, this is not going to be the last time we see you no. or hear of you. And uh, we'll check you guys out in the next episode of the Time Flies Podcast. Peace. <laughs>